Before I hit Q, how many people ate show of hands today? Come on. How many ate? Okay, good. Now I'm recruiting you all to help me. Ready, go. So I want to protect your lunch through fusion and analytics. It's a slightly different conversation than we've had in the past uh, few presentations, but I really believe that we can not only do digital disease detection, but we can do prediction. And so think of your favorite food. This is mine. It's a beauty, it's a cheeseburger. Now start thinking about your supply chain for your favorite food, right? So mine's gonna show up here quickly what I would consider my supply chain. It feels very sim you know, simple. I got some onions, I love a little pickle, I'm, I'm kind of a mayo gal. You know, you put that all together in a cheeseburger. I have to look and worry about all of those supply chains. If you're eating a fast food cheeseburger, you have 82 to worry about. And they're not all coming from one country. That's 82 supply chains we have to worry about someone intentionally contaminating or causing harm in the system. And that's why I would argue that I need all of your help. This is US-centric data, but I think it's true of the world. Global food supply exports from the US to other countries. You can see pretty quickly we are a global network. We also have the same situation in global imports. Again, this is to the United States. We get food from everywhere. I would argue that some of the countries up here in blue are not our friends, and that we should always be considerate of what's happening in the world and where our food is coming from and who might be bad actors. Here are headlines that I'm sure each of you have read. I know that by reading these headlines, you probably can't tell how that contaminant was introduced. Those are scary headlines, and those are very sick people. These were introduced naturally through terrorism and through what economically motivated adulteration, food fraud, or not selling a product as labeled. We won't know at the outset when this happens and why it happens and who introduced it, but we have to find better ways of uh, getting at it. The blue line is our consumption, illness presents on the red line, and the yellow line is public health recognition. Look at where blue and yellow intersect. Product has already been expired or consumed. That is not good enough. We have got to solve that. In the United States, we spend $152 billion on foodborne related illness. That is not okay. We've got to find better ways to solve this. I think we can through prediction and detection. Here's what threatens your lunch every day. We know about accidents, we know about Mother Nature, but we also have industrial sabotage, bioterrorism. EMA and disgruntled employees. All of these make a bad day for breakfast, and we've got to find better ways to bring it together. Now, what's our data situation? Everybody in this room knows data exists. I don't think we have a data issue. I think we have a data building bridge issue. We've got to fuse it together in a more meaningful way. We've got available data. It's variable. It's noisy. And we have dissimilar structures. That's why we built FIDES, the Focus Integration of Data for Early sig Signals. And that's pulling data together from multiple data streams to include trade, um, health data, and other things so that we might pull together and identify disruptions in the food system and hopefully predict. This is our sweet spot. So you see this is an epi curve. And the yellow uh, X is when we predict it. FIDES is going over here to the sweet spot either before or post event. And I think we can do that. In 2011, Thailand flooded. They were the second largest exporters of shrimp. They lost most of their harvest. We know that their supply in the global market should drop. It didn't. Somebody entered the market. I can go to regulators and I can go to companies and say, we need to inspect more shrimp. FIDES is a systematic process that allows us to ide uh, identify food system disruption and assess second effort. Um, second order effects from disasters, but we need, need multiple types of data and experts to look at it. Here are some of the triggers that we've learned help us identify when we have food problems, if there's high dollar values, when we have technology advances, when we have policy shifts. Hello, horse meat. Here are some of the sources that we've begun to assess and utilize. It is just a sample. We've come up with 58 data sources we think that we can pull together. Again, we need additional help in looking at some of these. Currently, we look at weather refusal data and adulteration. This is an initial platform of that database, or that, excuse me, the FIDES database. Uh, we do analysis. It's much like intelligence supply chains, and we look at import data every day to try to find anomalies in the system. So 
I implore you to come find me later today and help us solve this food problem. Thanks. Thanks.